everyone, it's Carrie from Garden Rudiments. Today we're going to be talking about how we have been getting electricity out to the greenhouse. So as you can see, we have a ditch. We went to one of the equipment rental places here in our area and we uh, rented a trencher. It cost me $120 for half a day. We dug a 20 inch trench that goes about 72 feet. Um, so you can see there is the greenhouse. And we go all the way down. And then we ran the trench all the way up to the foundation and we went between the foundation and the first layer of brick. And we had to take it with something like a, um, well it was a drill, almost like a hammer drill. And I don't know what it's called. I might put that in the description box if I ask my husband. But we had to get through the concrete uh, the block and the brick to get under the house so that we'll be able to connect the, the wiring under the house. And we filled the hole. It's kind of like great stuff, but this was actually, um, it was a slower cure. So we filled the hole so nothing could get under the house after we put the, the wiring in. And then you will see that we have PVC. The larger the larger gray PVC is one and a quarter inch. That's for the electrical wiring. And we fished through four number six gauge electrical wires, which will be two hots, one neutral, and one ground for a total of 50 amp. This is a lot more than we'll need, but my husband likes to go for the overkill, and that's okay. So next we laid PVC piping that's one inch, and that's the black that you see in the image, and that's for our water line. And then we ran a three quarter inch PEX pipe through that to get water connected. And then the, and you see a half inch gray pipe, and that's for the Cat5 Wi-Fi cable. So we had the opportunity to purchase the spool of cable for about $5, so we said, why not? Let's get Wi-Fi out to the greenhouse. So it was just a great opportunity, and of course my husband, like I said, likes that overkill, and he, he loved the thoughts of us having Wi-Fi out there, and then I could do more live videos. So at the other end, where it enters the greenhouse, this was the hardest part. So when we, you know, did our foundation for the greenhouse, we knew, you know, what we were going to be having to do. And before we started building, my husband went ahead and dug, and I think that's a four inch PVC pipe. He dug under the foundation, ran this pipe, and then it comes up inside the greenhouse. So we have all four pipes going into that PVC pipe. Well, that makes a turn as it goes up into the greenhouse, and that was the hardest part, is getting the one and a quarter inch, the one inch, and the half inch pipes to bend as they go up into the greenhouse. So we'll go in and I'll show you that next. So our electricity, water, and Wi-Fi is going to come in at the back of the greenhouse. So this that you see here is the PEX for the water line. And it rides in a one inch black PVC pipe. So everything is protected. We're doing everything to make sure we don't get water mixed in with our electricity. And it cups, comes up into this four inch pipe. So down in that pipe, of course, is an elbow, and that was the hardest part, is getting this up in here. And we fished it in, fished it in through the pipe. We ran all four cables for the electricity at one time. We taped up the ends. We've okay, so this is where our water, electricity, and Wi-Fi will come into the greenhouse. And this area back here is storage, potting soil, uh, fertilizers, chemicals, um, 
anything that we need for the greenhouse will be stored in this area. And hopefully I can keep it more cleaned up and organized, that's the plan. But what do we need electricity for? So let me tell you kind of what the plan is. Now this is kind of messy because we were out here working, but where the louvers are for ventilation, there will be a wet wall in front of this. So it's made out of like a corrugated cardboard. It'll have water running through it. And when the, the big circulating fan pulls air through it, it will cool the greenhouse down. About 10 degrees is what you hope to get. You hope to be able to cool it down 10 degrees lower than what the outside air is. So that's what we're gonna to have to have electricity for because we have to have water run through that wall and it has a pump. So the pump has to be powered by electricity. And then the louvers open with two of these motors, one on each side. Those run off electricity. Right now we just kind of have it running off of an extension cord but those are two things. So the louvers opening and then the pump that pumps our water through the wet wall. I want a plug in on each pony wall on the, the side that faces the greenhouse. And then I want one plug on each wall somewhere in the middle of the greenhouse on each wall. And then we have to have a plug for the big shutter fan and we have to have our uh, heater to be hardwired. And you know we're trying to think as we go what can we plan for in the future. I know that uh, I need a plug to run my grow lights so that's one thing. What else might I have? Who knows? I might want to put a Christmas tree over in the corner. That is a plan. So I have to have plug-ins and we're going to have 50 amps, which is a lot more than we'll need, but I just want to make sure as we do it um, that we have that we have allowed enough plug-ins that I won't constantly have to be running off an extension cord. We also have thermostats, you know, that controls things. So there's quite a few things that might need electricity. But anyway, that's what we worked on yesterday. We, we were very surprised that we got so much done. So besides all of the planning that I've been doing, I did water all of my succulents yesterday. It's just been very hot. They really needed it. And I think you saw, you may have watched the video that I did on one of my succulents that had gotten mealybugs. So that is treated and everything's looking good on the succulents. And all my other plants are looking good. I do have a plant that might be a casualty. I'm hoping it's just sunburn. It's just gotten way too much light. Um, this is either an aloe or a haworthia. I don't know which one. Uh, one of y'all may can tell me I don't have the name of it anymore. And probably didn't have the name when I got it. But you can see he is pretty brown. I don't think it's from lack of water. And there is still some green. I don't see any mealy bugs or any other kind of pest problems. I'm hoping it's just sunburned and then it will recover. So I'm gonna be putting this plant in the shade, just getting a little bit of mottled light until I see you know, that I'm getting some good growth on it. And you can see it's gotten really big. So it was put in this pot last fall when I took all of my succulents out of the uh, fountain. But it, it's really grown. Um, I think it's just a problem that it got way too much sun and heat. So it got way too much sun and heat too suddenly because I had it on one of the top shelves here in the greenhouse and I think it was just too much. It'd be something that I'll put down and it just gets occasional light for a while. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to consider this a part one and um, I will do updates as we're doing more on the electrical part. We will have um, a licensed electrician, electrician to come in and make uh, all the connections. All we're going to be doing is making up a plan of where we want our um, plugs to be, um, the controls that we need, and we have to run our wire from where we entered under the house to the, um, to the breaker box. 
So we still have to do all that and all that work under the house my husband just absolutely hates and I can't blame him for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one and I hope you'll look forward to part two. Thanks for watching.